the Costa Rican cloud forest, a unique environment I have had the pleasure of visiting and exploring. Home to many diverse species of plants and animals that require a cooler home with high levels of humidity. In today's video, we'll be rehousing a unique species of tarantula endemic to this cool environment, the Costa Rican red knee tarantula, Megaphobema mesomelas. So surely you guys remember a few weeks ago, I talked about how I've been contemplating the idea of rehousing the majority of my tarantulas and potentially downsizing in the process. Well friends, the rehousing is going to begin today. We're going to get started and I want to quickly take a moment to thank my friends over at Tarantula Cribs for sponsoring today's video. Friends, the rehousing process is going to be awesome thanks to this product right here. This is the Tarantula Cribs acrylic replacement lid and this thing is fantastic. Just wait till you see it in action, how it's going to seamlessly help the terrarium that our spider is going into while also protecting the animal. I'll elaborate more as we install it and set up the new habitat, but it fits a 12 by 12 footprint, so it's the perfect size for the majority of tarantulas and the enclosure dimensions they require. Let's get started. So friends, I was very lucky that a few months ago, someone was selling off their whole tarantula collection and they were offering me a female, an adult female Megaphobema mesomalas with her enclosure. Naturally, I realized this would be the only opportunity I'd ever find as these spiders are very rare, let alone an adult female. So I got one of my dream spiders. Here she is, she's absolutely gorgeous, but as you can see, her terrarium majorly needs to be redone. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's start by removing her from the terrarium by coaxing her with a soft paintbrush. Clearly she is not receptive. Oh, that is quite the threat posture. Wow, okay, we gotta try plan B. Whoa, whoa, girl, I promise we're not gonna hurt you. Okay, we need to try this differently. Uh, oh my gosh, hair kicking. Okay, now things are getting intense. For the sake of urticating hair protection, I probably should have been wearing rubber gloves this whole time. All right, we're more equipped for this situation now. We're gonna get everything out of there to make some room to bring the container to her. That way we don't have to nudge her too far. It's okay, girl, I know, I know, I know. Okay, we got her. Let's bring the lid down gently. But seriously, take a moment to look at how beautiful and velvety that spider looks. Ooh, she is nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you not just remember? The urticating hairs. You need to wear gloves before you start removing that substrate, especially if you're gonna use your hands. Do not do that, you will regret it instantly. Your hands will be so itchy. Honestly, it would even be better to have long sleeve protection, but I like to live life on the itchy edge. Now let's get everything out of this terrarium and clean it up perfectly. With our terrarium now emptied out, it's time to remove some of those dirt stains using some vinegar water solution and paper towel. Another tool that really helps is one of these blades. It's really easy to scrape off calcium buildup or that soil that just won't come off with the paper towel. With the terrarium completely cleaned, it's time to move on to putting our background in. For this, I'm going to be using cork tiles. Now, you guys ask me all the time, where do you get this? Oh, what is it? All I can say, friends, is that it's called Therma Cork. Just look up Therma Cork or Cork Insulation Tile for sale near me. So anyways, we're measuring out the right dimensions for the back wall of this tank. And normally I would use a power saw, but in this case, I'm feeling a little lazy and rushed. So I'm just gonna use this sharp knife to cut it. It's very easy to do and it snaps right off. Time to test fit our background before we silicone it in. Yep, that looks like a pretty solid fit. I mean, I definitely cut a little off, but nothing we can't fix after. Wonderful, so let's go ahead and silicone this to the wall. The silicone we'll be using is S1 silicone, which is devoid of all mold inhibitors and the safest option for any animals. We're just going to generously apply a few zigzag amounts across the majority of the surface area of the back wall, and that will be more than enough to adhere the background to the back pane of glass. Now we're going to press it down firmly everywhere and allow it to cure for 24 hours. Because of my messy cutting technique, I did damage some of the side of the background, so I ended up taking little bits of cork and siliconing them to wedge them into the gap to sort of fill that small space. 
Now it's time to prepare our terrarium substrate. Here this tarantula mix provides soil. And then I wanted to try something different by adding a clay component, the Stone Desert Substrate by Exoterra. It is my hope that the consistency of this substrate blend will not only allow plants to grow well, but provide my tarantula with a substrate that holds a burrow. You're probably asking yourself, why is he adding substrate without putting a drainage layer in there first? That's crazy! The thing is friends, I'm a firm believer that drainage layers aren't necessary in a lot of circumstances. Drainage layers make sense for terrariums that get watered in excess amounts or misted constantly. They need excess water to go somewhere where substrate will be separated and won't saturate. But in a terrarium that's going to be manually misted and maintained in that way or that's quite hot and sees a lot of evaporation, it doesn't really make sense to add that feature. With a good few inches of substrate in the enclosure, it's time to position her hide. I want this to be her burrow, so we're going to position it on an angle facing the entrance and I'm even going to put some substrate in it so she can dig it out. My favorite step has come. It's time to add live plants to make this as naturalistic as possible. Now I'm going to be real with you guys, I've never had an issue having a little bit of the soil from the original pot go into the habitat. In most cases I've grown them a few weeks ahead and rinsed them off thoroughly a few times before introducing them, but a little bit of that soil isn't going to hurt. Just try and remove as much of it as you can. This is a small lemon button fern that I removed from one of my crocodile skin terrariums. They're growing everywhere and multiplying so I figured it'd be the perfect plant for this back left corner. With all my plants perfectly placed, it's time to add a little bit of hardscape. These are just a few broken vine branches that I want to scatter around and make it look a bit more like we saw at the beginning of the video with the wild specimen in its native Costa Rican habitat. With just a few remaining touches, all we had left to do was water the plants before moving on to the next step and adding our first inhabitants. These are springtails. They aren't insects, they're actually called colimbola and what they do is provide the enclosure with a bit of a janitorial service. Their specialty? Consuming molds and fungi. These tiny dwarf white isopods are excellent scavengers and will make quick work of organic waste and debris. I'm incredibly pleased with how this terrarium is coming along. It's wild to even compare it to what it looked like before. Using that same vinegar water solution from the beginning of the video, we're going to quickly wipe down the glass and remove any of the dirt that sort of got everywhere while we were making this setup. It's time to add leaf litter. This is going to make our enclosure look super naturalistic and it's going to provide our custodians with shelter and food sources. Don't be shy to drop the odd leaf over top of live plants. Remember, that's naturalistic. I'm gonna add a little bit of moss here in hopes that it'll take. This is just a few clumps that I pulled from one of my poison dart frog terrariums. We'll see what it does. I'll make sure to keep it nice and well watered with reverse osmosis water, as the hard minerals in tap water usually will kill moss. I'm sure I can do an update in a few months to show you if it took. Alrighty, I think we're all set here. We just have to put the water dish in. And now we can talk about the incredible lid that's going to make this setup complete. This is the Tarantula Cribs Acrylic Replacement Lid. Now let me be clear that this product is specially designed to replace the lids of Exoterra terrariums that have a 12 by 12 inch diameter. This is the definition of quality, thick acrylic that's warp resistant plenty of ventilation all the way around, and a seamless design that fits flush with the Exoterra Terrarium lid mold. This lid is a game changer for invertebrate keepers. Not only does it protect your pet's feet from screen, which can damage tarsi, it also helps retain humidity while providing sufficient ventilation at the same time. Now back to this little thing, this is a magnet. You don't want to have to reach in in case you have a defensive species, so using the magnet attachment you can remove your lid from the outside of the terrarium. I'm going to place a cool LED light over my tank for my plants to grow properly, and let's get this girl back in her home now. Alright girl, easy does it, you can do it, come on up now, come on. Welcome to your new home. Alright friends, time to let her settle in. 
I think she's gonna love it in here. I still can't believe what it used to look like and what it looks like now. Let me know in the comments what you think. And look, she found the burrow. That didn't take long. Here she is digging it out and making it spacious enough for her to nestle into it and feel comfortable. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all if you got your hands on a tarantula cribs acrylic replacement lid, what species would you use it for and why? Maybe you have different kinds of dart frog that require high levels of humidity. I'm interested in knowing what you're gonna do with this. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks so much. Well guys, let me know what you thought about today's video. It's always so satisfying moving your animals into an enclosure that you think they're going to enjoy more, thrive in better, and just maybe even exhibit more natural behavior based on the available enrichment and other features that that enclosure offers them. So I wanna say thank you so much to Tarantula Cribs for sending me a lot of these lids because we have a lot of rehousings to do and a lot of upgrades to make and it's gonna be fantastic. All thanks to the implementation of these acrylic replacement lids. Let me know in the comment section down below which of my tarantulas you think we should rehouse in the same way next. Maybe one of my Postalotheria species or another New World Terrestrial. I know you guys have favorite spiders that I keep. There's so many. I'm listening and we'll do that one next. Give them a thumbs up to vote and we'll pick the one with the majority of votes for the next upgrade. All right, everyone. We'll hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Check out the playlist up above if you wanna see more tarantula or arachnid related content. And I can't wait to see you all next week for an upcoming video. Take care, everybody. Bye.